Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. It is time to finally talk about the new patch that is coming to League of Legends, patch 6.11. There are a fair number of changes in this patch and for this video I decided to change the format just a bit. So for these patch videos I want to try changing it by listing a certain number of bigger changes that happened throughout the patch like a big nerf, a big buff, or just some big indirect buff. Essentially just listing out what I personally believe to be are the biggest most important changes that I believe you guys should definitely know about. So let me know what you guys think about this change in the comment section below and if you end up enjoying this video make sure to hit that like button to let me know. As usual this will be made in collaboration with Pro Guide, so big shout out to them with the extra help that they provide. There will be a link down below to a free trial so definitely recommend at least trying them out. Especially with their new feature where you can ask a high low player any question you have almost at any time. Alright so let's get started with the changes right away and the first one I want to talk about is Kindred. And the the reason I'm talking about Kindred first is because I personally believe Kindred is probably the best champion currently in patch 6.10 and they are finally receiving some further nerfs. So the first one I want to talk about is the Q nerf. Now the damage has been lowered by a whopping 45 at rank 5. And since Q is usually the first ability you max on Kindred, this is obviously quite impactful. But to try and make up for that, now the damage on the Q will be increased by 5 for every passive stack that you obtain. Now in my opinion, having around 8 or so stacks is a fair number of stacks, it's not an absolute insane amount, but it's not insanely low either. 8 stacks is quite reasonable, and by 8 stacks, obviously that's going to give you an extra 40 damage increase. Which will put your Q back up to 175 damage at rank 5 by the time you get those 8 stacks. Now this is not only still 5 damage lower than the 180 you get now just from massing it to rank 5, but you're also getting this much later into the game. So for the most part it's a pretty big nerf, however, if you happen to snowball and you just happen to go really ham on the stacks, then there is potential to be doing even more damage later on into the game if you happen to get a lot of stacks. Tiers have also been added to their passive. So tier 1 and tier 2 are the same, meaning that it'll be applied on Scuttlecrab, Wraiths, 4-5 stacks will be on Jungle Camps. If you add 5 to 7 stacks, it'll be applied on Red Buff, Blue Buff, Dragon, and Rift Herald, and 8 plus will be on objectives. So like Baron and Elder Dragon. Their E ability is also receiving a bit of nerfs, but it's not the biggest thing in the world, so it's not really worth talking about. All in all, a pretty good nerf. I have to say, it is going to be lowering the damage power of Kindred for most players, and for the majority of the game. However, a very skilled and experienced Kindred player still has that potential to be just as strong, if not maybe even stronger than the current Kindred. Kindred very late into the game. Alright, so to me that was probably the biggest change of this patch, but let's move on to change number 2. For this one, I'll be talking about Trinity Force or Triforce, which received some significant changes. The zeal component of Triforce has been changed with Stinger, and Stinger as an item has had its cost reduced, but its attack speed also lowered. With the Trinity Force item itself will now cost you not only 67 less gold, which really doesn't matter too much, but it now gives you 40% increased attack speed from 15% and it also offers 20% CDR from 10. But on the negative side, the critical strike chance is now at 0% from 20%. So what does this mean for the item? Well now obviously champions that rely much more on attack speed than critical strike chance are going to be absolutely loving it, so maybe someone like Aurelia, Jax, maybe even Kogma. These champions obviously can definitely rely on critical strike chance, but attack speed is just much more valuable. So this clearly means that these champions are getting an indirect buff, because Triforce is going to be quite strong on them. I wouldn't even be surprised if someone like Aatrox begins to utilize this item as well. All in all, this is a pretty big change, because Triforce has always been a staple item, and it's been as it is for a long time with the zeal component. So now that being removed, and the critical strike component also being removed, is very interesting, and I'm really curious to see how this plays out. But if I were you, I would definitely start looking out for Aurelia, Jax, and maybe even Kogma. Moving on to change number 3, we'll be talking about Echo, finally receiving some further nerves to try and bring down the whole tank Echo hype. So Riot is still trying to figure out a way to make people play Echo as an AP champion and not this annoying tank Echo. But I will admit that some of these changes or nerfs that they're doing are very questionable. 
So his passive now has a 5 second cooldown rather than 3 on the same target. His Q ability's initial damage AP ratio has been increased, so when you throw it out from you initially, it does do a little bit more damage if you build more AP. But on the return, it does have lower base damage by 20 at every rank. This is a little bit so-so, I mean increasing the AP ratio on it coming out by 0.1 really isn't all that big, but I guess it's still better than nothing. The stun duration on his W, and this is where I think it's a little weird, has been lowered to 1.75 from 2.25. Now, I don't really get why they would do this. Again, their intent is to try and make Echo be played as an AP champion. Why not have this stun maybe scale with AP somehow? Because in my opinion, that would definitely give a bigger incentive to play him as an AP champion and not tank. But they're also nerfing his ultimate by reducing the base damage by 50 on every single rank, but increasing the AP ratio to 1.5 from 1.3. All in all, this is pretty good in order to try and make people stop playing tank echo, but I don't really feel like it's a big enough buff to actually want to play AP echo either. To me, I feel like a lot of people might stop playing him for a while. I could be 100% wrong, and personally, I'm still going to be playing him because I want to try him out and just see and feel how good he can be, but I really wish that they made the stun on his W scale with AP to just drive even more incentive to play him in such a way. But let's move on to the next change that I want to talk to you guys about, and this is a pretty big one, Illaoi. Whoa, this champion still exists? I know, right? I mean, Illaoi is just absolutely MIA. No one ever sees her anymore. I rarely see her in any of my games. She came out and was considered to be quite strong, especially in the laning phase, but then everyone realized that, you know what, maybe she's just not that good and no one ever played plays her. But I have to say, the buffs happening to her in this patch definitely might increase her play rate. So in a nutshell, what they're trying to do is make Alawi not so reliant on just going some full glass cannon AD type build, and if she doesn't, she'll be lacking damage. Instead, what they're trying to do is make it so that if she does build a little bit of damage, but mainly prioritizes tanky stats, she'll still be a big threat. And here's how they're doing that. Whenever you level up your Q, your tentacles damage, which now is called slam, will be increased by just a flat percent amount of damage it already does, rather than increasing the AD damage ratio. Her W now, instead of doing flat base damage plus a percent of AD scaling, it will now do percent damage of the target's maximum HP, while still scaling with AD. Now again, this means that you don't have to just build glass cannon, you can build a little bit of AD, maybe like a black cleaver and maybe even one more, like a Sterex gauge, and then you can go pure tank thanks to your W doing percent max damage. The other changes happening to her are not really worth talking about because these are by far the biggest ones, and I feel like they're pretty good ones as well. So I'm definitely expecting to see more of Alawi, but honestly not an insane amount more. I don't think this might be enough, but this should definitely give people a little bit more incentive to try her out. Next up, we'll be talking about the nerfs happening to Zed. Now, I did make a video specifically talking about this, doing the math behind it, so if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend you do. But they're nerfing the base damage on his Q ability, they're also reducing the AD ratio on his Q ability, but landing more than one shuriken on the same target will overall do more damage. So I will not be going into the specific math and the calculations here because I did it in my other video, but what you need to know is yes, you will be doing less damage if you land 1Q, yes, his laning phase will be a little bit weaker if you're just trying to harass with that single Q, but if you land 2Qs or even 3, the damage will be significantly higher, especially at 3Qs. So when you're all in your target, if you throw down the shadow, land 3Qs, you are going to be doing quite a bit of damage. All in all, they're trying to make Zed much more high risk, high reward. Personally, I don't think it's a bad change. I think it's pretty interesting and I'm curious to see how it plays out. But moving on to the next change I want to talk about is Zir, another champion that I also made a video talking about. His W can no longer be used on towers to deal damage to them and his ultimate's duration has been lowered to 3 seconds at all ranks from 5, 6 or 7 seconds. On top of this, he will no longer grant 20% increased move speed to allies and himself whenever they pass through his ultimate. So my thoughts on this change are as follows. The W change is whatever, I mean fine, it's pretty big, but it's not the end of the world. The 20% removed move speed buff on his ultimate is also not all that bad. But reducing the duration on his ultimate to 3 seconds from 5, 6 and even 7 seconds at rank 3 is quite big. I personally do not agree with this, I think this is a horrible change, and I have no idea why they would do this. I still think Azir will be a strong champion in the right hands, and he will always be a strong champion in the right hands, that's just what he is, but this is gonna make things a little bit more awkward. On the bright side, however, in second people and pulling off those Azir Shurima shuffles and stuff is still very much possible, so I'm really happy that they did not change that, and if they ever do, I will personally fly over to Riot HQ, and I will complain. And the final change that I want to talk with you guys about in this 
this video is going to be with Velkov. He's finally getting a little bit more buffs. His Q slow now decays over a longer period of time, aka the slow will last on the target slightly longer. But the bigger change, the one that actually matters, is the one on his ultimate. So the base damage on his ultimate got reduced by 50 at rank 1, 100 rank 2, 150 at rank 3. But on the bright side, his ultimate will once again apply his passive stacks, which I think is pretty good because his passive does do a lot of damage. But what makes this even better is the fact that he still retains that ultimate passive where if you research the target, then your ultimate does true damage for the full duration. So that's still there. I'm really happy. His passive will be applied by his ultimate. All in all, pretty good change to Velkaz. I think it's a buff and I'll be surprised if I don't see more Velkaz in my game's next patch. But that is about it for this video, guys. I mean, there you have the new format of these patch videos. Personally, I think this is more interesting and much more entertaining because rather than talking about almost every single change happening in this patch with some of them not really being all that significant or really all that worthy of talking about, I'm just talking about what I personally believe to be the biggest changes of the patch, the ones that I think you guys should definitely know about when going into the next patch. So again, let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this change to the series. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button. Big shout outs to Pro Guys for helping me edit this video and I'll see you for the next one. Peace.